Hey everybody, welcome back to Johnny Builds, where this week I built this modern style outdoor sofa made from lumber I got at the home center. Now this is a super simple, easy project that only takes about a day to build. I finished it with a Shosugi ban. I torched the wood to make it to where it withstands being outside even better. It's a super simple project that you can accomplish in about a day. So let's see how I did it. All the lumber I used for the sofa I got from the home center, I used four two by eights, four one by eights, and four two by fours. To get everything prepped, I ran all of these through my thickness planer, which gives you a smoother surface and removes all the rounded edges. But this step is optional if you don't have a planer. Next, I cut the two armrests and the two lower supports, which are each cut to 33 inches. Then I could cut the four armrests uprights to 22 inches each. The armrests get attached to the uprights with two and a half inch screws, but first I marked out the hole locations and then I drilled three holes using a 3 8 inch bit and I'll plug this with a dowel later on. Now I could put together the two armrest assemblies, one for each side. I added some wood glue to each one of the ends of the uprights. I added a couple clamps to keep everything aligned and gave the glue a few minutes to set. This helps prevent the pieces from moving when you drive in the screws. I cut four of these lower support blocks, which are all seven and a quarter inches square. Then these support blocks get attached to the side assemblies with some glue and a few brad nails. And of course, screws would work here too if you don't have a brad nailer. Next, I added the lower brace, which is just the 30 inch offcut from cutting the two 33 inch armrests from the eight foot board. And again, I use glue and brad nails to attach. The front, back, and rear cross braces are each made from two by fours that are cut to 50 inches long. Now I clamp these boards together and cut them at the same time. Then the ends of each board get three pocket holes drilled in each. I cut up some 3 8 inch dowel plugs to fill the screw holes on each of the side assemblies. And last, I could come in with my saw and trim them flush. I attached the three cross braces using pocket screws on each side. And while I do this, it's a good time to say, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the projects I'm working on next. The four one by eight panels for the bottom of the sofa span 64 and 3 eighths inches, and I cut them all to this length. Like most things on this build, I attach the panels with wood glue and brad nails. And again, you can use screws here if you don't have a brad nailer. I flipped the sofa over and measured for the seat bottom supports. I cut these two supports to 30 inches and added pocket holes to each end. And as you can see here, the sofa is very sturdy once you add the supports to the bottom of the seat. I'm using these two by fours to support the backrest and I set the miter saw to 15 degrees to cut a bevel on the bottom of the support. Then I can mark the location for the top 15 degree bevel. Once these were cut, I attached the three backrest supports to the seat panels with glue and brad nails. I marked out the panels for the backrest to 50 inches and cut them over on the miter saw. 
And what did I use to attach these panels? You guessed it, more glue and brad nails. And then to attach the tops of the backrest, I drilled a 3 8 inch hole and hammered in a dowel. At this point, I could also plug all the pocket holes with a 3 8 inch dowel and then flush trim the excess. And now I could sand the entire sofa up to 120 grit before torching. And now for my favorite part. Since this is an outdoor sofa, Shosugi Bond will help preserve the wood and protect it from the elements, from the water, from sun. I gave the whole sofa a good char, but stopped short of the alligator skin finish. And there'll be a link to the torch I used down in the description below. I came back with a wire brush to knock off all the loose soot and ash. And after that, I hand sanded the whole sofa to 120 grit. This makes for an even finish and removes the lines left behind with the wire brush. I wiped everything down with a rag and it was time for finishing. Again, I'm using the Minwax Wipe on Poly. After Shosugi Bond, the wood is very thirsty, so you'll see me using a lot of the Wipe on Poly. It quickly soaks down into the grain, and I did three coats. And this sofa was done. So thanks for watching. I really love the way this sofa came out. It's a super simple project, but it's got a very cool look, a very modern, sleek, minimalist design. And it's sort of convertible in the way you can use it with the cushions or you can use it without. Either way, it looks great. The Shosugi Ban torched wood finish gives it its own special, unique character. Now, this is something that I prefer to do. It's gonna help it make it more impervious to being outdoors, to being in sunlight, to water. But you don't have to do that. If you don't have a torch or if you don't wanna get one, you can just leave it the raw wood. You can put a, a sealer or protectant on it to make it to where it can withstand being outdoors. I prefer to torch the wood. I think it looks cool. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you liked it, make sure you hit that thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with all my future builds. Now I just wanna give a quick shout out to Zach over at ZH Fabrications. The music that I used in this video, that's his music. He used it in one of his videos and he put it out there for all of us to use for free. So. Thanks, Zach. I really appreciate it. And you guys should check it out. There's some links down below. Also, I'm going to have free plans for this sofa. They'll be coming soon, and I'll have those linked down in the description below. So thanks for checking this one out, and we'll see you back here next time.